I thought I was dead. I know enough to know when bad stuff is happening in my head, you know, was exploding. It hurt so bad and the ringing in my ears was so bad I couldn't even hear anything or concentrate or nothing. And that went on at least a month where it was the ringing and, you know, hurting real, real bad. They brought uh, the O'Malley and Vega, and they brought some other guys to the front of the cell, and they're like, yeah, that's him uh, running around. He said, that's the little bitch running around acting like he's a cop. He said he's whining and he needs his medicine and all that. said, I need to speak to the nurse. And uh, every time I said something to him, they just told me, shut the fuck up. That's exactly what they said. Um, it was three days of getting beat. So it's hard to put it in chronological order or whatever. It comes to me in, you know, like waves I can remember. The first time... Uh, O'Malley came in, he was backhanding me real hard and grabbing me by my hair, but I didn't have much. And uh, would call me a bitch and pussy, you know, kind of yeah. shit, you know. I was like, who's the bitch, man? You're in here beating on me like a dog. I said, you're a coward, man. You know, you're using your position so he you know said a few things and then he left uh came back again and this time he beat the, he beat me bad and bad and bad he walked in he told the guy get up movie he goes i ain't going anywhere he goes you want some too and he made him stand outside the so he beat me and beat me and grabbed me by my face and my neck and was kneeing me. And that's, I knew, I, I felt like electrocuted or, you know, I boxed for years. I, I know how it feels to get tagged and there was nothing like it. You, when you can't defend yourself or you don't know what's coming it's hard like they took me to this room so they took you somewhere isolated yeah and then that's when they handcuffed me to the chair and what did they do they beat me with their fists and knees, and their knees slapped pulled my hair grabbed my face i remember his knees like rattling my head man I, 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 uh, it was bad. I had headaches for a year and not like a headache. It's hard for me to admit this, but it was mind boggling how bad it hurt. And then over the year, as it went on and stuff, I, you know, I can't say that I didn't think, if I didn't have people that loved me, my wife and kids and people that depended on me, I would have killed myself. It just never left. I feel so worthless. When you get beat so bad, it's, it's so hard to process anything. I don't, there's periods where I don't remember anything but how bad it hurt. You know, and then I'm sure that I could have, maybe would have hit home a little bit better when I told you, and he said, it's not over. It ain't never fucking over, you know. And he bent over and whispered in my ear, he goes, 
I find you and I fucking kill you. And by then I was already like, fuck you, man. You know, come get me. Ain't like you can do much worse than me. Just remember this time I'm not gonna have cuffs on. Every time I see a police officer in my rear view window, I get white knuckled and, and freaked out. Or there's a strange car in front of our house. Or when people come to our door, you know, I'm like, <sighs> I, it's, I can't even describe the feeling that overcomes you inside. It's fucking terrifying. If I don't sleep, the only time I sleep is when I'm exhausted and pass out. I sit here in the dark and hear noises and I'm like, oh. And they have to pay. My family pays every day. I don't like myself anymore because this is what I've become. If I'm not sad, I'm angry. It's just, I don't leave my house hardly ever.